Morning, John. Morning, Liz. How are you? Oh, I had a great night's sleep. <laughs> yeah, you were a bit lucky. Um, guys, just uh, to give you an update, um, we're, uh, well, actually, this is the second day of our trip to Tasmania. So we're heading down to Tassie. We're going to spend some time down there. Um, I think we've got about 10 weeks. Oh, I think so. Yeah, around about 10 weeks um, to, to really explore the place. And, and as you know, we live down there and there's so many places that we didn't get to go to. We were down there in March last year, February, March, um, and it just um, wet, it did wet the appetite, didn't it, Liz? So, well, um, what a circus it's been. You know, we this is now the 2nd of January, 2024, and we've just had some awesome, awesome weather in Queensland, in Brisbane. Um, Cyclone Jasper went through up in Cairns, and then we ended up with this rain depression that just sat there and hung and hung massive storms through the gold coast all that area is a lot of it's underwater and smashed and smashed fortunately mm -hmm. we decided that we were going to go through to um to, to geelong via the new england highway at any rate so all our plans were based around around that so we finally got out of brisbane it was late um, we got up yesterday morning we were all keen to go and it just was absolutely bucketing down and it was just a decision that we made. We're like, this is just crazy. We've we've built a little bit of fudge factor into the trip to Geelong. So we you know, we weren't um, busting our you know what's to get there and we could have a bit of a look around on the way. So we've done that's exactly what we've done. And and then about uh, ten thirty and ten o'clock it was starting to clear. We had oh, a look yeah. at the yeah, we had a look at the weather radar. You could see that it was all centered around the coast. We've got a good friend in Warwick, so we rang them. They said that they'd had rain, but nowhere near what they'd had on the coast. So uh, we decided to, to, to bolt. Then we went up over Cunningham's Gap through to, to Warwick, um, and looking back, that was just horrendous. You know, you can just see how, how heavy and dark those clouds are, uh, and it's just getting to the coast, and once it gets to the range, it's breaking up. So from there... We just tootled through to uh, to Warwick, refueled, um, and then headed out towards Tenerfield. And to be perfectly honest, you know this is all this is all new territory. Tenerfield's about as far uh, as we'd been south on this road. Um, we spent a bit of time at Stanthorpe, as you know, and, and whatever. But now we're um, adventuring into to virgin territory again uncharted territory uncharted. so this is all new roads that we've never been on from Tenerfield onwards so it's always good to explore new places yep and we had plan a and plan b you know i'd, I'd sort of mapped out some spots where we'd be camping for the night on our first night out just as well we did have plan a and plan b because you know, normally we'd be leaving at six o'clock in the morning because we're all eager to go. Yep, absolutely. But because uh, we didn't leave till around about 11. So plan B was the Beardwater Heritage Park Recreational Area, which is just out of Glen Innes. So for us, it was about a four hour, four and a half hour drive. Yeah, so we pulled without in. Without stops. So we pulled in here given that. We uh, come from Queensland and New South Wales, so you've got daylight saving. Yes. So it was it was four thirty, New South Wales time, which was sort of was plenty. It gave us time to, you know, set up, have something to eat, um, just take a deep breath. We're on our way, and um, and the skies and the skies have cleared. You know, we've opened, we've woke, woken this morning um, to clear blue sky, bit of wind. But that's fine. That'll that'll keep blowing the clouds away. You know, we just it's the, the weather for the last two weeks in in Brisbane and Gold Coast has just been horrendous. When we got out of Tenerfield, um, there were the remnants of the bushfires that they had out through here in November, October, November. That they uh, they had some pretty nasty bushfires out here, and, and it's it's amazing to see how the bushes just oh. regenerated, Liz, isn't it? Some of the trees they they're green. They're starting to grow. They've got green growth all, yeah, all through black, them. Yeah, they're black stalks and these little green things sticking out of them. Yeah, so, they're, so they're starting to to regrow already. So that sort of brings you up to date. We we were a bit hectic. It was a well, well, it was a bit hectic yesterday. So uh, we thought we'd leave it and just film a little bit of an intro this morning. Um, so this is day two, and we continue to head south towards Geelong to catch the boat. Um, so we'll catch up with you guys a little bit later when we see where we end up.
Yep. Again, we have a plan A and a plan B, um, we but we're getting away nice and early, so we, you know the plan A should should be okay unless we have any issues. All right, guys, thanks, thanks for joining us. We hope you enjoy this series to Tassie. Um, we certainly uh, we're certainly looking forward to bringing it to you. That's for sure. Yes. Cheers. Okay. One thing we did forget to add. You know, as you know, it's a ritual to do McDonald's for breakfast and we left at lunchtime. So we didn't break that tradition. We ended up KFC for lunch yesterday. But guess what? The Heritage Park where we stayed is 10 minutes out of Glen Innes and Glen Innes has a McDonald's. So I'm going to get my regular latte and my egg and bacon McMuffin after all. With some kilometres in the bank and the tummy starting to rumble, we start looking for somewhere to stop for lunch. We find ourselves stopped at this lovely little park called Milani Park and it had toilets, an undercover picnic table that suited our needs to a tee. Thanks for lunch Malali, time to get back on the road. Well, you can't beat good old country hospitality, and we parked up behind the Crossroads Hotel in Tommingley. We headed to the bar for a drink or two, sat outside at the barrel tables and watched the world go by whilst thinking about the next day's travel. I would suggest that this is a place where the truck driver's driving time ends when they travel out of Melbourne. As these guys were parked up and 100 metres down the road, there would have been another 50 odd trucks parked up heading north. Crossroads Hotel is a relaxed country pub with friendly locals, great food and plenty of beer. With some shower activity overnight, things were a tad damp this morning when we packed up. Not that that's an issue with the tea van, as nothing damp gets near the bed. With breakfast done, fruit, yoghurt and muesli, we also had access to the toilets and a hot shower at the pub. With that all done, we were soon on our way. The next stop is the radio telescope, just out of Parks. It has been famous twice, once when it helped broadcast the first moon landing and secondly in the movie that was made around that event. You absolutely have to check this out. After a quick stop at the Parks Information Centre, we decided to take a little bit of a detour. Well, we've stumbled across this place called Utes in the Paddock. So we'll just let you have a bit of a look. Obviously it's just abstract art by the look of it. Very unique. So this is just on the outskirts of Colobian. Colo Condobulin. I can't even say it. Condobulin. Con, 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 condobulin. Condobulin. There you go. So this place is just on the outskirts of Colobian.
Look at her. Look. She <laughs> can't help herself from laughing. Oh my god, that's funny. What am I supposed to do? I'm just struggling to pronounce it. So this place is just on the outskirts of Condobilin. There you go, got it right. You think she'd have a little more sympathy for me, wouldn't you? Instead of taking the piss, really. You got this one here that's got the um, Dame Edna sitting on the loot. Well, there you go. So we've just had a bit of lunch out by the dam. What a cracking spot. Uh, you can actually stay there free camp for up to 14 days. Toilets, showers, um, and obviously access to the to the lake as well, or the dam. Uh, well, anyway, we're going to make our way down this road. The lady told us about the information centre. And see, uh, there's some sculptures. Not that we're really into sculptures as such, but it's just interesting uh, the trouble that people have gone to to display their uh, their thoughts, I guess. Here's another one here. It's about the farm, I'd say. And they've all got a theme, like that. this particular one is um, Outback Camels. The artist shows the central role camels played in opening the pastoralisation throughout the Outback. And uh, obviously access to remote communities and, and remote properties. And this one's about Clancy stopping the overflow with an old bottle of Bundaberg rum. Well, hi guys, we've stopped at a place called Bundaburra, just out of Forbes. Um, as we said yesterday, we're well ahead of schedule, and we took a detour today and went out to the Utes and the paddock. What do we do after that? Then we came down through the some way, and it's got all these sculptures, which we'll drop a few in to show you uh, them. Um, nice little drive, about 90 k's from the town back to Forbes. So yeah, just a nice little uh, hour's drive, hour and a bit by the time we stopped and took some photos and did those sorts of things. So it was great, really good day. Um, and sorry, you can see, cup of tea. It's about 3.30 I think, probably a little bit early for a beer and I want to download some footage and stuff this afternoon off, off the cameras. So we're here tonight and then tomorrow we're going to head to a place called Tabletop, I think Liz said it's called. And then, um, and then from there into, into Geelong. But with today's Thursday, so we're going to get in there on Friday. Um, we don't sail till Tuesday, so we might do a bit of a scout around and see if there's some other stuff to do on the way. Um, you know, I guess we, we were being super cautious. We really were being super cautious and, and allowing ourselves plenty of time, so we didn't have to worry. We didn't have to rush. Um, we could take our time, which is exactly what we've done. So uh, it's worked out. It's worked out fine. All right, well, we're going to have some um, burgers and pasta for tea. We've set up nicely on the riverbank. I'll we'll shoot you some photos of that shortly. Um, you can hear a pretty popular spot for water skiing. You can hear the big V8s and the towing skiers up and down the river. So that's uh, that's all good. And there's probably a few about because it's obviously still Christmasy, Christmassy holidays. Um, yeah, actually, here comes one down here now. So, all right, well, we'll catch you guys later. Um, we're having a ball, so cheers. There you go, dinner tonight. Yes, I know, who doesn't like an oozy dinner? Well, what a cracking campsite this is. Oh, Bundaburra Creek campsite? Yep, 
just out of uh, Forbes. Just a nice little, nice little spot. Beautiful camping by the creek. Right by oh, the creek. Well, it's more like a river. And it was pretty deep because there'd be boats going up and down, up and down with the skiers. So, yeah. What about last night, John? Yeah, well, that was. <laughs> We dodged a bit of a bullet. Oh, thank God! You know, we watched. I was watching on the. We we got a. Sorry, let me go back. We got a bit of internet service, and um, we could actually see a dirty big black black cloud way out there. And it's funny how you get totally disorientated when you travel. And you know, I'm like, well, there's the river. We're looking out to the west. When actual fact, we weren't. We're looking north. Um, because basically behind us, sorry, east. Basically behind us was west. Um, and that was where the weather was coming from. So I thought it had already gone through, but it hadn't. And then, you know, all of a sudden that peace and serenity around the riverbank uh, turned into um, quite some gusty winds. Yes. And we thought, we're gonna cop it, we're gonna cop it. But it actually, we, we just got the edge of it. We didn't even get any rain. No, That's I reckon it, it through, went through Forbes. Yeah, I reckon it did. Um, so we've got some, we've got some photos that um, of, of the sunset, which was awesome, but directly um, opposed to that was this horrendous big black cloud and storm. And you could see there was a wall of rain. Yeah. You could actually you could see, see that. The, yeah, yeah. From the side just, of it. Yeah. Oh, I don't know, half an hour and it all went through and we yeah. watched, you sort of saw a bit of a lightning show disappear in the distance and that was it. That was it. We had a lovely yeah. evening. And we ended up with a nice lovely evening, yeah. So we, we had them burgers and pasta for tea. Yes. Anyway. All right. So we're about to hit the road. So we're about to hit the track um, to head further south. Um, we'll let you know when we get there. We, it's not a big day today. We've got about four hours, I think, of travel mm. time. Um, we're just, just poking along, so if there's some interesting stuff to see on the way, we, we might stop and, and do that. Yeah. Uh, as I said, we're not in any big hurry. Okay, well, let's, uh, let's hit the road. Cool. See you guys. Okay, bye. We decided to get off the highway and find a turn off to Tamora and somewhere for lunch. What an absolute gem this turned out to be. This has become my Achilles heel. We found the Tamori Aviation Museum. The first part of this self-guided tour takes you above the workshop where they maintain and repair these aircraft to keep them as working exhibits of history. It's such an iconic aircraft and I feel very privileged to fly this particular aircraft, particularly with its ties back to tomorrow from the second world. Amongst the museum's displays are a couple of Spitfires and the engines that powered these mighty fighting machines, the Merlin. Well, that was a couple of well-spent hours, but we must move on. 
and before long we were in the state of Victoria. Yeah, it is. That was awesome. So we stayed last night at the Edamutta pub at Tabletop, or what was the Tabletop Hotel. But before we got here, let's go back to earlier in the day, uh, where we stayed at... The Bundaburra Creek Camp. Yeah, you did. By yeah. the uh, Bundaburra Creek. By the Bundaburra Creek. It was Creek. very nice. It was, it was a great little spot. Um, yep. Yeah, bunkered down, yeah, got, sort of missed that storm and stuff, so that was cool. Um, then, you know, then we're hightailing it in towards Victoria. So the first, we, we, uh, we because we didn't have a lot of case to do yesterday, um, we didn't leave till, oh, it was mid-morning, 10 o'clock or something, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I managed to download all the footage that we'd taken for the, the days before and set all that up. So that was good. And then um, about lunchtime, we were about this little place called Tamori. Tamora. And we, so we called in there and had a bit of lunch at their information area and there was a board that said that they had a, an aviation museum. So I'm like, well, we're going to have a look at that. Yeah, it was definitely. At any rate, yeah, it was an awesome spot. It was uh, the displays. Um, it's one of the few places where all the planes that they've got are actually actively in service. Um, they run three or four events during the year where yes. they actually fly them. Um, it's the home of a couple of Spitfires. Oh, they amazing they, Aren't they ever, yeah. And because they've got a, one of the big Merlin engines sitting there on a block, so you can just see how physically big these big V12s were. It was just, um, yeah, it was a crack of a spot. So we ended up, we thought, oh, well, we're probably half, three quarters of an hour there. We spent nearly two hours yes. uh, there. There's lots to see. There is heaps to see. And it's interactive. So yes. um, there's, whilst there's little telescreens and, and audio stuff, you can also get a an audio pack that, with a lanyard, so you can actually listen to each of the um, displays or the stories and displays. Um, there's some really really good stuff. So if, yeah, for heaven's sake, if ever you're in that area and you're into any sort of aviation, it's definitely a must. Uh, and we pulled up at the Edamata pub. Um, they've got a, an awesome bit of a campground out the back, so uh, we went and saw them. You can you can camp there as long as you have a feed. And we were going to do we were going to do that anyway. Yes. So we had a feed and a few beers. And what a feed! I couldn't I, climb over my chicken schnitzel. No, uh, it was huge. It was huge. And then to boot that, um, somebody won the bar. They have a raffle, and they won the, the bar raffle. Or oh, sorry, Liz won the bar raffle. And then the people that were camped beside us came back, and, and they offered us actually offered us. They were running a meat tray, and we're like, yeah, we just our luck to win it today. We just got no room to to put it anywhere. And the people that were camped beside us come lumbering back just about, I don't know, a bit after 8.30 with this massive big meat tray that they they've won. won. The yeah, so uh, they were very kind and, and uh, gave us a bit of meat out of it because um, they know on their way back to Sydney. So they said, oh, it's all right, we'll just go in the freezer when we get home tonight. Yeah. So that was cool. Showers, um, a showers and toilet are, are sort of on site. You get a token, five bucks for a token, you can have a shower. They were, they were good. So yeah, absolutely cracking spot if you're in the area. Today, um, 
nice and easy peasy. We're just going to go down um, towards the Hume Dam. Is it the Hume Lake? Lake, Lake Hume. Lake Hume, I Lake believe. Hume, yeah, and then and then wander down through that, follow the road down, um, find somewhere to camp tonight. Not sure where. We're not in any hurry. Um, we have actually booked a caravan site in Geelong in Belmont um, for Sunday and Monday night. That'll give us a chance to do some washing, get a bit orientated where the, where the boat and that is. All right, so uh, as John Luke would say, engage. We're Let's away. Let's go. <laughs> The Hume Dam. I don't, I don't know whether you can hear me above the roar of the water, but they've got one of the spouts open and the water is actually pouring down into the Murray River. So there you go. That's I, I gather that this is the headland for uh, for the, the mighty Murray. Um, we'll see if we can find something on that's written on it. But yeah, it's a um, pretty spectacular structure actually. The triumph in engineering when it was built in the years after World War I. Hume Dam caught the public imagination in the same way the Snowy Mountain Scheme did after World War II. When finished in 1936, Hume Dam was the biggest in the Southern Hemisphere and one of the largest in the world. Today, the dam continues to play a critical role in capturing winter and spring rainfall from the Australian Alps and releasing it to regulate the flow of the River Murray. As well as irrigation, the dam supplies stock and household needs for towns and landowners along the Murray River across three states and is used for flood mitigation and hydroelectricity. With lunchtime looming and just on the outskirts of Beechworth, we stop for something to eat and a look around. Beechworth is a well-preserved historical town located in the northeast of Victoria, famous for its major growth during the gold rush days of the mid-1850s. Beechworth has reinvented itself and evolved into a popular tourist destination and wine growing area. Between 1852 and 1857, it was a gold producing region and centre of government. During its boom times, it boasted a range of industries, including a tannery, jewellers, a brewery and blacksmiths. It had schools, hotels, a prison with imposing stone walls and a hospital. The outlaw Ned Kelly had many links to Beechworth, including spending time in jail. Today, Ned is honoured by a pie. Yes, there's a meat pie named after him. With time on our side, we backtrack to the Woolshed Falls, just a few minutes back up the road. Located in the Chiltern, Mount Pilot National Park, Woolshed Falls are a popular destination for nature lovers and history buffs. The area was once the centre of one of the richest gold fields in Australia, where up to 8,000 prospectors camped along the banks of Spring Creek in search of their fortune.
look what we found. Welcome to Gap Steed Estate. A family owned winery and prominent northeast Victorian tourist destination, renowned for its variety of award winning emerging and classic wines. After sampling a few, we purchased a couple of bottles of their high country Shiraz. Morning, Liz. Morning, John. Did you have a good night's sleep? We did, actually. Mm. Yesterday, we went, we left the Edamoga pub. Yep, went to Lake Hume. And went to Lake Hume, yeah. Yeah, that was cool. Actually, we met, someone else said it's worth going to have a look, and then uh, the people that were camped beside us said that one of the flumes was actually working fairly well. So, we went and had a look, and it surely was. So, lots of water in the lake. Um, I don't know how, I guess you can see the mark where it gets to full, but and maybe overflowing at times when they get floods. Um, from there, down to Beechford? Beechworth. Beechworth. Close. I was close. Um, Beechworth, in a, in a Ned Kelly territory. Oh, yes. Yeah. We saw the jail where he was um, incarcerated at one point. Yeah, we did. Um, had a bit of a um, peek around there. Had a pie while we were there. We went in and, um, to the Beechford pie shop which was recommended. A Ned Kelly pie and, I had. And Liz had the, the Ned Kelly pie, which is a meat pie with an egg, an egg on it, really. I don't quite know what the egg signifies, but at any rate, maybe that's how Ned liked them. Yeah, maybe. Then we actually went, backtracked a little bit, because when we went to the information centre, the lady said, you probably should really go up and have a look at the falls. So we went up, um, had a look at the falls. Man, that was crowded. So it was pretty warm. I think the temp on the car said about 31 degrees. Um, so there were just people there sitting in those little pools, which was looked very, very pleasant. Um, but we needed to keep we needed to keep trucking, so we left there, came to Bright, snuck through there, and that that's a busy little place. Oh, and what a pretty drive! Very pretty. Yeah, what a like, pretty drive. All the trees lining the main drag. It yep. was and they're very growing pretty. over the top of yeah. one another. Uh, that was, it was and it was a really pretty drive down through there. We really enjoyed that. Stopped in at a winery. Yes, we did. Um, only one. Yeah, one's, <laughs> one's enough. <laughs> when, you know, when you're travelling. Yeah, it is. And we got a couple of bottles of white wine, white wine to, to take with us. And then, uh, of course, then it's starting to get towards the late in the afternoon and we need to find a camp. So we found this camp, which is called Smoko Campground. Smoko Campground. I'll drop the little dot uh, where it is. So it's just out of Bright, right on, I think, oh, I don't even know what the, the name of the river is. The Oven River, yeah. The oven or yeah, yeah I, I think, think it's, it's the, the oven. oven river. So um, it's a creek, a little river that um, and the campground's there. So we found a spot and we had to sort of sneak around and made a bit of space uh, and, and it was good. So they were still rolling in just on dark, mm. single cars, uh, rooftop tents, things like that. So that's, you know they didn't they don't need a lot of room. And and they unpacked and away they went. So 
very, very pleasant. We got a spit of rain. Um, we watched the radar and there was a bit of a storm to the, I think it was the east of us, but we got just drop, 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 drop. We put everything away and then it, and then it stopped and that was, that was all we got. So yeah, all pretty good. Today we head into Geelong. Um, today's basically we're getting in we're going to give a couple of days in the caravan park we got we had five days six days mm -hmm. yeah so we've got some washing to do um we've got to check the the details on the boat i don't know what fruit and veggies i can't remember now what fruit and veggies and things you can take into tassie if any so i'll have to have a look through the fridge make sure we've got that all the eyes dotted and the t's crossed for that um and yeah so we're, we're going to we got four and a half, five hour drive today, nice Just and easy. Just to cruise down. It's pretty early now. We'll get away. So if there's some, you know, interesting stuff to see on the way, we've given ourselves time to stop and have a look at it. Yep. All right. So um, we'll let Tally ho and we'll catch you guys a little bit later. And that's it for us. That's it for us. Bye. Other campers had advised us that the weather forecast looked somewhat dubious and the potential for storms and up to a couple of hundred mils of rain over the next couple of days. With this in mind, we ended up backtracking and linking back up with the Hume Highway just south of Wangaratta. The further south we progressed, the darker the clouds became until it did start to rain and quite heavily. As we got closer to Geelong, the rain eased, enabling us to set up in the dry. It appears we dodged a bit of a bullet, as watching the news that night, many millimetres of rain fell over the northeastern parts of Victoria, with road closures and flash flooding. Well, we finally arrived at our destination. The next day, Liz did some washing. We organised a few things and had a look around the caravan park. It's a kid-friendly park with lots for the littlies to do, including a pool, jumping pillow, tennis courts, pedal cars and a mini Jurassic Park to stretch their imagination. We then headed down to Warren Ponds to catch up with the team at Battery World to film a segment that we'd been working on for them. They even have batteries to power Liz's head torch. Thanks Battery World for helping to power our passion. We had the most amazing dumplings at a Korean restaurant and we'll make sure we do dinner here on the way back. But I must say, if this is the future of eating out, I'm not sure I want to move into the future. Tuesday, the day of our departure. After checking out as late as we could, we held up in a parking area straight across the road from the caravan park. We grabbed some lunch and then headed to the Corio Shopping Centre which is conveniently placed between the caravan park and the port. I used this time to edit the footage from Battery World that we did yesterday before we headed to a spot that we'd scoped out for dinner. Then it was time to head to the boat. Well, Liz, we're getting excited now. We're in line. We're in line. We see the signs, Spirit of Tasmania. We haven't seen a boat. 
hope. Um, but the did, gates are open. The gates are open and they're starting to ferry people in. They did text to say that it was going to be another half an hour late for win. Um, so it was supposed to sail at 11.30, so it's probably going to begin to wait at 12. Something like that. But we went and had, um, found a great spot. If ever you come over, or come down and, and going to go over on the, on the night sailing, it's a great spot to go and have dinner. Yes. They recommend the Corio Village to park up where large vehicles can park. Right. But on a Tuesday, the, the complex shuts at um, 5.30, which wasn't going to do any good for dinner. So. And I didn't really want a hamburger. No. So just up the road is the Shell Club. Some time later. <laughs> Excited, John. Yeah. Getting close. See if our measurements, see if our measurements are right. Yeah, we should be right. I think we booked for 11 metres and we are about 10 and a half, so. No idea. I'm sure you just stop. Hi, Hi darling. Good, you thank you. Just give me one second. I'm just going to run this over to the next booth and then I'll be back over to check you. No worries. Okay? Um, but I'll do those. I'll put, put your booking number there. I'll put that on, up on the system. do some multitasking here. What I'll do, uh, I want to jump out. When I jump out of the booth, I'll get you to drive towards me. I'll let you know when to stop. Yep. I'll take those tickets into the next booth and then I'll come down and just double check your trailer measure. No worries. All right. All right. So I got you in at 10 metres this evening and you've given me 11. Yeah. So what I'll do is I'll jump it out on both legs. It should provide a recap. Oh, okay. Well, we just, we put a bit of fudge factor in it. No, no, I'm I'd rather be that way than the other way. Exactly right, exactly right. All right, so what I've done is I've fixed up your Geelong and your Devonport side. Okay. So you're going to get a refund. Okay. So I'll organise that now. All right, so it'll go back to the credit card that was used to do the booking, so we're ending in... Yep. Yeah, that'll be fine. I'll process that through. Now, if any instance that it bounces back to us, I'll just confirm your details as well. So I've got an address in a town called Parkinson. Yes. Yep. And a mobile number that ends in eight Perfect. It does. Perfect. All right. So I've processed that refund. Now it can take three to five minutes to say. That's fine. No, 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 that's fine. Last time we sailed, we went to Sydney from oh, Devonport. That's how long ago it is since we oh, went on one week. They were brand new ships then. They've done a few sailings since then. They've definitely had well, they were, sailings since then. They were Three, there were three boats, two going backwards and forwards yeah, from Melbourne, one, three, and one and one to Sydney. Yeah. So yeah, I saw that. So when's the new ones? Hopefully sometime next year. Oh, well, next year. Now, so I say this year. Yeah, 2024. Yeah, 2024. But um, it's kind of our guess is as good as yours. <laughs> so there's your boarding passes, your room keys, and the second one is just a flyer of the amenities and storage along in case you're requiring before you sail this evening. Right. All right, they're heading out of here. I'll get you to drive up towards security and they'll take you through to the security and quarantine process. Lovely. Thanks, Dalton. In the security there. area, the vehicles are checked. We were quizzed about gas bottles and the guys confirmed that the ones on the van were turned off and marked them with a label. I also declared that I had a couple of those jet boiler bottles and they wanted to see them to make sure that they had lids attached and then all was good. We were now ready to well, board the vessel. We're finally aboard it. Oh, my God, my tire alarm's going off, that's alright. We've seen lots of questions around the loading of the ship, so we've left this segment in to show just how the vehicles are loaded for those that are interested. Some time later. Yeah, well, uh, 23.37 it is, and we're still not on the boat. We're on the ramp to the boat, uh, but it's been a pretty tiring day. So I don't know what the story will be when we get on board. I know what I'd like to do, but to whether they'll, uh, whether the bars and things will still be open um, is anybody's guess. All right, so we're going to sign off for tonight and we'll catch you guys in the morning. Hopefully we had a nice smooth sailing uh, and we'll show you some pictures of Devonport as we arrive. Cheers.
Yep, we're on the boat, finally. Oh man, what a day. All right, well, as I said earlier, we're gonna see if we can get a drink and then we'll be hitting the, hitting the hay, but um, anyway, we're on the, on the damn thing now, so sweet. It's a bloody long time since we've been up this late drinking piss, I tell ya. Cheers. Cheers.